Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of these midweek makeup games and there's not only one makeup game we also had one game that is actually kind of taking it from the new year and putting it squarely into, in, into the old one so well technically we're at the halfway point of the season not quite we're already over it and that's all thanks to uh, Real Madrid uh, playing at Athletic Bilbao uh, you saw the headline it's all about consistency or lack like thereof that actually determines for me uh, is or is the big det determining fact factor um, of why Real Madrid is so ahead of everyone else Real Madrid may not play great However, they consistently get results and performances. Whereas all the challengers, I mean, Barcelona has been an inconsistent bunch all over the place. Although I have to say, I think they're starting to turn a corner, um, which also reminds me, I am planning to release uh, some performance graphics probably on Christmas day for you. So uh, if you don't see those, I mean, Merry Christmas to everyone, but I will do uh, a dedicated video for that. So uh, there will be a bunch of uh, performance reviews coming. And you can see how uh, teams have been performing throughout the season, which I find very, very interesting. Um, but for me, the two that are the least in, uh, consistent is Atletico Madrid, although they're consistently losing now. And also uh, Sevilla, to me, remains one. And I used to call them the most frustrating team in Europe. I still am kind of there because they're frustratingly inconsistent. In many many ways we have only four games to talk about and uh, surprisingly i saw a lot more of those than i would have would, would have expected um it started actually early with VRL against deportivo otherwise uh, again they would not not, not have chosen but you know i had it on um and yeah Shira moreno makes a huge difference for vr i already said in the last review video um, he scores the first one and uh, the second one I think by uh, Dia was the great one there was uh, one of those first two to go there was just scintillating I think it was the second one uh, assisted by Trigueros uh, but it may, may, may have been the first one as well I mean it, it's all a little bit jello if you uh, watch too much and then you are distracted by work and um, also family so it all gets a little bit mushy <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes with, with the memory um but remarkably Alaves mount the comeback uh just before the half it was an individual error and especially about the equalizer out of nowhere um the ball is played out uh, by Villarreal uh, after I think a foul that he wants to play it, uh, across uh, and Rosello just intercepts it and puts it in and at that point there was a real possibility that Villarreal are gonna drop points and Alaves get a big uh, point there but then uh, Dia after a nice Parejo pass uh, sets Villarreal on the way and it got ugly 5-2 uh, in there is Pino uh, then right after the, th the, the three turn laid on Gerard Moreno Another one, as I said, Gerard Moreno uh, really giving Villarreal the punch up front. They have been missing all season long, more or less. His injury was a major, major, major blow for them. Um, the big one, of course, was Sevilla against Barcelona, which honestly was kind of a weird game. Uh, it was not the uh, Barca, it was played in torrential rain, which for Sevilla is uh, rather unusual. But hey, so be it. Uh, I actually thought that at first uh, Barcelona had a little bit more car control, but just at the moment, like at the 25 minute mark, Sevilla could assert themselves a little bit more. And then a uh, great corner by Ra Ra Rakitic, where um, Papa Gomez runs from one corner of the box to the other, other one, and that completely unsells the Barcelona defense and they get the 1 0 lead. Um, and to be honest, um, while well, you know, I generally have some more Barcelona leanings for the title race, it would have been great if Sevilla could get a win there. Uh, so yeah, I, I was so and so about it. Um, and I actually thought that Sevilla will hold on to on to on, on, on. but again, another corner which has been a weakness for Barcelona all, all along. Uh, but then Bele uh, Araujo uh, has it in, and it's 1 1. Um, I have to say at that point, overall, it was a deserved 1 1. Um, Second half, okay, this is where things got ugly and you check your phone, blah, 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 until BOOM! Red card! What happened? Yeah, uh, Koundé wanted well, to get the ball, there was another Barca player and suddenly Jordi Alba is kind of nudging him and Koundé loses his cool um, and slams the ball into Jordi Alba's face who then proceeds to, uh, I guess, fake a coma or something like that. I mean, absolute uh, detestful play acting, I gotta say. Kunde would have gotten sent off 
anyway. I mean, it's unsportsmanlike conduct of the highest order to throw a ball in the face. Uh, and I heard some discussions and I do a little bit agree with that because I, uh, let, let, let me put that, of all the Barcelona players, for me, Jordi Alba over the past years has been the one that I consistently dislike the most. And it's exactly for uh, actors like this. And I actually think he is not even that great anymore. I know he is a leader in the locker, in the locker room, but exactly actions like, like this is over uh, all play acting. And the point was made, you know, yes, Kunde needs to be sent off, but shouldn't we uh, do something about Josh or the Alba as well? Because first, the aggression comes from him. And second of all, he really tries his best to get Kunde sent, sent, sent off. He would have gotten sent off the dad. That's not that point. But all this little, uh, you know, the whole act that he's putting on is actually quite detestable. It's Jordi Alba, so I'm fine. Uh, but... I honestly, I, there should be some sanction for him as well too, because if, if you want to get get rid of that part of, of, of the game. Uh, at that point, then I thought, hmm, Barcelona might actually see, 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 see how, how the win. It took a little while, because, you know, you don't want to get too open. But then, uh, you know, around the 80 minute minute mark, they really had a lot of control and uh, even created chances. A big one, but then they really just got off the post and it ends in a 1-1. I gotta say Barcelona is probably a little bit aggrieved with that because overall they I think they would have deserved the win uh, there. Then the big shocker of the midweek happened yesterday when Granada beat Atletico Madrid 2-1. Uh, and that despite being 1-0 down the sack second minute through a great draw Felish um, a run. Uh, who puts it then out. Uh, but um, Machis then with an uh, equally great shot from far outside. Makes the game 1-1 one, one, and it kind of ebb back and forth. Uh, it was probably one of the worst jersey matchups and I was thinking, I don't even know how to improve that. That, that one except that Atletico Madrid go all navy, but that might clash with the uh, blue shorts. But I think an all navy look would have been better than the uh, navy pinkish look. Over, over. It was really hard to tell them apart at times um, in a way. So yeah, um, Machis gets an equal. The game is kind of even maybe Atletico really trying to get some, 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 something and then a really nice attacking move. That was not offside as it was seen because initially the goal was not given. Sees uh, Jorge Molina score the winner for Granada. Huge win for uh, them and a fourth loss in a row for Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid trending dangerously downward and one would say... Uh, there's no title challenge coming from Atletico Madrid uh, for sure and even Sevilla is not by far not there with Real Madrid and why that there yeah, because Real Madrid against Athletic Club the, it just needed 10 minutes the first 10 minutes were crazy because Benzema scores two excellent goals one has, 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 has to say not all the second one was nicely assisted by Bilbao in, in, in many ways then uh, Sanse pulls one back with a great shot that went against the post and in but then they were just defensively solid but also athletic club are not rewarding themselves for all their efforts and that's always a problem so real madrid end out the year with another win uh the next round will be coming uh, uh right at new year we have actually one last game in the between valencia and espanol but then it's all um on the um, uh, Northern New Year's year, yesterday by 2nd of January, uh, with a very interesting Atletico Madrid Rayo Vallecano matchup. Rayo has been flying high. Uh, Betis against Celta sounds like a fun game as well. We have Barcelona at Mallorca, and Cadiz against Sevilla is kind of a derby, uh, you know, Andalusian derby. But yeah, there's some interesting stuff in there. Real Madrid have to play at Getafe which they most likely will win. I uh, Also, since it's kind of uh, rounding out the season, they're at the almost halfway point, so it's 18 rounds played plus a 19th round for Real Madrid and Athletic Club. Uh, Real Madrid far ahead uh, with a game in hand, uh, one has, has to be said, 
but still a uh, 96% chance of winning the title. I think that's a done deal. Uh, we have two surprise teams in the top four, which probably will fall away eventually, eventually although it would be fun to see them uh, stay in there, which would be Real Betis and Rayo. Uh, Real Sociedad has been trending down, but Barcelona maybe can mount a challenge. Now it's very tight uh, between the uh, fourth and the eighth uh, spot, so there it's all um, possible. Uh, on the bottom, we have uh, Cadiz and Levante at the moment looking really not good, although I keep saying that Levante to me is a team that looks a whole lot better than they actually are by points. Um, and then it's kind of the, the last spot. is Al Alaves, Elche, Getafe, Mallorca, kind of that's Mallorca because of a uh, low rating. But if I look points, it's uh, Getafe, Elche, Alaves make up the last spot and the rest seems at the moment kind of safe. So that was it for the year for me for La Liga, except for the one performance video that I'm gonna do. Uh, please let me know what you thought about the midweek games. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.